Okay, so last thing in this section that we need to talk about is tangent planes and the normal line. You guys know that we've already done tangent planes, right? Like that was a whole section a few days ago or last week, right? Tangent planes, we use them to find linear approximations to estimate error. Okay, so this is just going to be another way of finding a tangent plane. Okay, so here's what we're going to start out with. We're going to have some surface S. that has an equation such as f of x, y, z is equal to some value k. What this means is that S is a level surface of a function f of three variables. So you guys remember that? You had a function of three variables to find the level surfaces. You would set that function equal to different values of k and graph them. Does that sound familiar? OK. So let's sketch ourselves a little picture. OK, so let's have this be our surface s. So it's like part of a sphere. That's what I'm going for. And then we're going to say that we have some point P with coordinates x0, y0, z0. And that's going to be some point that's on S. So maybe it's this point right here. C then is some curve that's on S and that passes through P. So maybe this is our C. C is going to have some equation, R of T, which will be X of T, Y of T, and Z of T. We are going to say that P corresponds to T naught. So when you plug in T naught, you're going to get point P. OK, so because our C lies on our surface S, we're going to use this equation up here. X, Y, and Z, though, are going to be functions of T since we're using that C. So we have F of X of T, Y of T, Z of T is equal to some value K. So then what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate with respect to T. If we differentiate this left side with respect to T, I'm going to have the partial of F with respect to X and then I'm going to have dx dt plus the partial of f with respect to y times dy dt. Add the partial of f with respect to z times dz dt. If I differentiate that value k with respect to t, I'm going to get 0. Bless you. OK, partial of f with respect to f x, partial of f with respect to y, and partial of f with respect to z, what is that? If you take a function and you, and you differentiate with respect to x, y, and z. I used the chain rule, yes. But yesterday, what word did we give that? The gradient. Yeah, so another way to write this, this is the gradient of f, so this one, this one, and this one, dotted dx dt, dy dt, dz dt, what is that? Yes, r prime of t. Okay, so 
So we, though, are interested in using point P. So what we're going to do is we're going to now plug point P in to this right here. So it's going to be the gradient of F at point P, which is the X naught, Y naught, Z naught, dotted with our prime of T naught. It's going to be equal to zero. What does it tell us when we have two vectors and we dot them and we get zero? They're orthogonal. So on our figure, we already know where our prime is. It's the tangent vector. So this one is our prime of T naught. Our gradient vector is going to be perpendicular to it. So it's like coming out at you. So that's a really important idea. So this tells us that the gradient vector, bless you, bless you, at point P is orthogonal to the tangent vector passing through P. Now, how does that help us? It helps us because in order to write the equation of a plane, any plane, we need a vector perpendicular to the plane. If we are looking for the tangent plane, which is going to be going through this tangent vector somehow, this gradient will be the one that we're going to use. So tangent plane then to the level surface f of x, y, z equals k at some point p which we decided was x naught, y naught, z naught, is given by the following. We're going to have the partial with respect to x at that point times x minus x naught plus the partial with respect to y at that point times y minus y naught add the partial with respect to z at that point times z minus z naught. All of that is equal to 0. Bless you. Uh, that's a very tedious way to write it, so there is an alternative way that is easier to remember. And that is the gradient of f at the point dotted with r minus r naught is equal to 0. Oftentimes when you are asked to find the tangent plane, you are also going to be asked to find what's called the normal line. The normal line is the line that passes through your point P and is perpendicular to the tangent plane. You should recognize that that's going to involve the gradient. Here's the equation for the tangent or for the normal line then. x minus x naught over the partial with respect to x at your point equals y minus y naught, partial with respect to y at that point. So that is the normal line. That's the symmetric form of a normal line. Questions on either equation or using them before we 
do an example. Okay. So here's our example. We are going to find the equations of the tangent plane and the normal line at the point negative 2, 1, negative 3 to the following equation or the following surface. x squared over 4 plus y squared add z squared over 9 equals 3. Okay, before we jump in and actually find the equations, what surface is this? An ellipsoid. Yeah, it's an ellipsoid. First thing we need is we need our function f. That's going to be all of this stuff. So f of x, y, z. is going to be that x squared over 4, add y squared, add z squared over 9. This corresponds to the level surface when k equals 3. That k you don't care about. We're not going to use that. Next, we need the gradient of f. So you're taking the derivative with respect to x, y, and z. You're going to get 2x over 4 which simplifies to x over 2. You're going to get 2y and then 2z over 9. This is the equation that we're going to use. So we need the gradient of f at our point. So specifically, we want to look at the gradient at the point negative 2, 1, negative 3. So we get negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. 2 times 1 is 2. And then negative 6 over 9, which simplifies to negative 2 thirds. So then our tangent plane is going to be that vector dotted with r minus r naught. So that's going to be x minus negative 2, y minus 1, z minus negative 3. So r minus r naught, r minus r naught, r minus r naught. All that is equal to zero. Are you guys okay on where I got this one? Mm -hmm. We're okay so far? Okay, so multiply it all out. We get negative one times x plus two. Add two times y minus one. Subtract two thirds times z plus three. You can leave your equation like that. I would suggest multiplying everything out and multiplying by 3 to get rid of the fraction. If you do that, you get 3x minus 6y. Add 2z plus 18 equals 0. So either one of those are sufficient as the equation of the tangent plane. If you wanted the normal line also, it's going to be x minus x naught. That x naught, y naught, z naught is this point up here. So x minus negative 2, y minus 1, z minus negative 3. And all of that over the gradient that we found up here. So negative 1, 2, negative 2 thirds. That is the equation of the normal line. Any questions on that example before we talk about one more quick case? No? We're okay? Okay. So we have one special case we need to talk about. Special case is, what if we have some surface, S, and it's not in the form that we looked at before. So it's not in the form of a level surface, but it's instead in the form z equals some function of x and y. So 
So normally we had x, y, and z on the same side equal to some number. What if now we have z on a different side from x and y? So what you're going to do then is your big function f of x, y, z is going to be f of x, y minus z. So we just move z over. So we get f of x, y minus z equals 0. So that would correspond to k being 0. So then the gradient of f will be the partial with respect to x of that little f, the partial with respect to y of that little f. Partial with respect to z here is going to be negative 1. So then the tangent plane, or the equation of a tangent plane, becomes the following. Partial with respect to x at x naught y naught times x minus x naught. Partial with respect to y at x naught y naught times y minus y naught minus 1 times z minus z naught. So it's the same equation. It's the gradient dotted with r minus r naught. But this is the special case where the partial with respect to z is negative 1. So anytime you have a function in this form or an equation in this form, move z over and then do the same thing you did before. Any questions? 